Well, hello again, all my uh, YouTube channel subscribers, and thanks for returning to Classic Dirt Bike TV, where we take a look at those uh, long lost classics from back in the day. Now, unfortunately, we've just been announced that there's another full lockdown here in Scotland, so unfortunately, uh, another month of not being able to travel and uh, bring you uh, brand new material here. But uh, as soon as we can get the OK to travel, uh, please bear with me and we will bring you uh, some brand new bikes uh, to feature here on Classic uh, Dirt Bike TV. Now in this uh, next video we're going to take a look at another few paddock bikes and we'll be looking at another uh, 1970s uh, Myco machine. Uh, we'll also be uh, taking a look at a 1982 430 uh, CR Husqvarna and uh, also we'll be having a browse at a uh, big uh, TT 540 uh, Yamaha four-stroke machine and uh, finish off with uh, maybe an old uh, YZ490. So there's plenty coming up in this uh, next video. So once again thanks for uh, tuning in and uh, let's just get straight into the video. Okay, first up, a nice uh, looking 250 Maiko that I captured at the Revival Scramble back in 2018. Now, I'm not entirely sure of the year of this bike, but uh, it could certainly be a 75 or maybe even a 76 bike. But it's uh, a very nice old uh, classic uh, nonetheless. But of course, back in the late 1970s, these coffin-shaped alloy tanked uh, Michaels were great bikes in their time. And although this is a 250, the bigger AW400 was uh, certainly the bike to have back then. And if you had a decent rider astride one of these bikes, uh, they could be anything on the racetrack in their day. But this little bike here is uh, quite a tidy example of one of these uh, iconic uh, Michaels. Now I'm sure you'll know by now that these old 1970s uh, Michaels were made famous by uh, German motocross legend Adolf uh, Wheel, who uh, despite never ever managing to win an international title, he still won 14 German motocross uh, national championships on a works version uh, of this bike. And uh, of course he was nicknamed the Iron Man of motocross because he rode for more than 20 years at the top of the sport uh, riding against many riders who were uh, much younger than him and uh, he spent almost all of his entire career riding uh, these Maiko motorcycles. But these uh, Maiko motors or uh, Maiko if you pronounce it uh, that way but we always pronounce it a uh, Maiko here in the UK but these Michael motors were great power plants and were very powerful and reasonably reliable as long as you kept on top of any uh, maintenance issues that uh, popped up from time to time. Now the engine was a conventional piston port two-stroke motor with a four-speed gearbox and a uh, wet multi-plate uh, clutch which used those uh, quite weird dish-shaped washers as uh, clutch springs which was uh, quite unusual but worked amazingly well. But in 1976 Michael brought out a five-speed version of this motor which was a fantastic engine and is still very much sought after with uh, Michael fans around the globe. Now the famous alloy coffin shaped uh, tank which of course was a 1970s Michael trademark for many years uh, before uh, they eventually switched to plastic fuel tanks in 1980. Although it looks like some remedial weldings uh, taking place on this particular tank and I'm uh, sure that this is not the stock uh, factory welding on uh, this particular fuel cell. But I'm sure it was around uh, 1975 or 1976 that uh, Michael began switching from the conventional vertical upright position of the rear shocks to a more uh, laid down angle with their uh, rear suspension. So uh, with that in mind and looking at this particular bike, this could even possibly be one of those later 76 models. 
Now that uh, Japanese Makuni carburetor is uh, certainly uh, not correct for this bike as uh, these old Michaels would have had a big uh, Bing carburetor fitted as standard uh, from the factory. But really there's not a lot of bad things that you can see about these old late uh, 1970s Michaels. They were very good bikes for their time and in terms of power the 400 of course was naturally the better bike but uh, they were pretty straightforward when it came to maintenance and as long as you kept your eye on things like the primary chain which uh, could stretch and eventually break up there were certainly no more uh, issues with this bike than you'd uh, get with any other make of a 1970s motocrosser. Although as I mentioned earlier these are still uh, very popular with the guys who want to do uh, pre-1975 uh, twin shock racing and uh, there are still a few examples doing the rounds for sale although you'll almost never ever find one of these 1970s Makos in its original condition. Okay next up we're going to take a brief uh, look at Brian Allardyce's 1982 430 CR Husk Varna. Now if you're a regular visitor to my channel you may have had a chance to see the video I did on this bike when it was uh, first built although as you can see since then Brian's bike's been through the motocross wars and uh, it's uh, pristine patina the bike had when it was first uh, built has been uh, slightly rubbed away with uh, many days on the racetrack. Although initially this uh, was never really a bike at all as uh, Brian built uh, this bike from two old Husqvarna scrap machines that he had lying around his workshop. Now the chassis and the running gear are from a 1982 uh, 250 Husky and uh, Brian used the 430 engine from an old uh, 1982 Enduro uh, Husqvarna as the motor for this uh, new bike. But when Brian completed the build of his new bike this was a very nice machine and was also uh, good enough that it was uh, featured in the world famous uh, VMX Classic Motocross magazine uh, some years back. Uh, but naturally and as you'd expect she's lost a bit of the uh, glamour that she had back then as her uh, paint's now beginning to fade a bit uh, but Brian's intention was always to use this bike as a weekend racer and, uh, but it was still uh, very nice to see it all bright and shiny when it first uh, came out at the workshop. But I'm sure you don't need me to tell you about these 82 Husqvarna's uh, because they were great bikes and in fact they still are and are uh, widely used and sought after by classic and twin shot racers and these 430 motors uh, were certainly never short of outright grunt with their 38mm uh, uh, Makuni carbs and 6 speed gearboxes but they were a decent uh, weight as well for an open class dirt bike and uh, as I remember I think they tipped the scales at about uh, 229 pounds which uh, was a relatively uh, light weight for a big uh, 430 uh, twin shot racer. But this example of Brian's has been uh, very well put together and at the time of the bike's initial build Brian had spent a small fortune uh, putting all the period correct parts in it to make sure that it was all done uh, just right. Now as I recall these alloy husky gas tanks held around uh, 10 litres or just over two and a half gallons of fuel which was usually more than enough to keep that 430 motor fed uh, even on the longest of races. And during the build of the bike Brian sourced many of uh, this bike's parts from HVA factory when he was uh, putting the bike together and uh, HVA of course are a very good contact if you're looking for parts for your old uh, twin shock Husqvarna's. Although I have to say that uh, Brian's bike is still looking quite good because it's been a few years since I uh, took the initial pictures of his brand new bike and as far as I know he's been racing this bike ever since then so it must have had a few race events under its belt uh, since then but it's another very nice machine and of course very quick and uh, thankfully 
uh, no black wheels during its restoration. Now this next bike is Alan Adair's four-stroke 540 Yamaha and these uh, short clips were captured at a Scottish Twin Shock and Evolution race event at Loch Gilphead in Argyllshire uh, just a few years ago. Now from what I know is that uh, this bike's almost certainly a hybrid as it appears to be uh, made up from all different makes and models of uh, bikes although I'm sure uh, the bike's frame is a genuine uh, Yamaha chassis with uh, the motor's engine oil of course housed in that uh, down tube of the bike's frame. Now as you can see the bike uh, uses the well proven TT500 engine and these Yamaha 4 bangers were very hardy and uh, very reliable. Uh, they were maybe not the lightest of course if you wanted a bike to be uh, flickable as uh, it's quite a heavy lump to chuck around but uh, what it doesn't have in weight saving it surely uh, has in outright uh, horsepower. Now uh, as I remember uh, these 500s put out about 26 horsepower although uh, with Alan's particular motor being bored out to 540 it may be uh, slightly more in this case but uh, as you know these TT500s were first introduced in 1976 as an enduro bike although many riders uh, did tend to then upgrade them to full blown uh, motocross machines and if you knew how to ride them you could certainly achieve decent results uh, on the racetrack. But if you did like your big four stroke engines on your off-road bikes back in the day then these TT500s were certainly an excellent choice for an old uh, Scrambles uh, race bike uh, with uh, those big five-speed gearboxes and wet uh, multi-plate clutch. Now I can't really tell you if the bike's forks and front brakes are the genuine article but uh, a very good set of drum brakes will certainly be needed to slow down the inertia of this big bruiser when it starts to fly along the racetrack but uh, I've actually seen Alan racing this bike many times when I've attended these twin shot race events and it's still a very quick little bike considering the weight of that uh, Yamaha motor. Now again the bike's swing arm doesn't look to me like it's a genuine uh, Yamaha part but it certainly looks like it could be maybe from an older uh, Suzuki bike uh, but uh, nevertheless it all seems to still fit uh, quite well into that uh, Yamaha chassis. But it's certainly again uh, something uh, very different and uh, another example of one of these hybrid twin shock race bikes. Okay our uh, final machine in this particular video is Derek Wilson's YZ 490 Yamaha and again I'm guessing here and I think this could be a 1982 model. Now Derek's YZ is another uh, very good looking example although again not fully original as it appears to have uh, a later set of front forks fitted uh, at the front end. Now as I remember these 1982 bikes were the replacements for the fantastic YZ465 Yamaha which uh, almost everybody who rode one still uh, continually say that uh, the 465 was up there with one of the best bikes that Yamaha ever produced. Now because Yamaha had increased the motor size on these uh, 490cc 1982 bikes uh, they thought there was uh, now no need to give them a 5-speed gearbox. Of course, uh, the earlier 465 Yamaha was uh, fitted with a 5-speed box and so these 82 490s uh, had to make do with just a 4-speed uh, gearbox. Now these front forks are almost certainly not the standard Yamaha items although I'm not really surprised that Derek's changed them as the standard forks on these bikes were always far too soft uh, straight from the factory and uh, working on the front end was almost the very first thing that new owners did when they bought uh, these bikes. 
Now the rear end of these bikes uh, wasn't really much better but uh, with a bit of work and a new uh, rear shock uh, things could improve the handling uh, at the back but uh, essentially uh, the bike's entire suspension system as standard uh, was not a patch on its previous uh, sweet handling 465. Now as you know the single rear shock lay underneath this uh, fuel tank and was connected to Yamaha's monocross linkage system which was uh, supposed to be an innovation in its day but there were uh, much better systems available for motocross bikes in 1982. Now the rear drum brake again was uh, quite decent for an older drum brake system and it wouldn't be too long before Yamaha were uh, fitting hydraulic disc brakes to their race bikes in the following uh, few years. But when all that was uh, said and done, these YZ490s weren't really bad bikes, it's just that uh, when they left the factory they needed a lot of sorting out by the owners before they could be turned into proper usable race bikes and once you'd spent a bit of money on them to sort out uh, that squishy suspension then the complete uh, re-jetting of the troublesome uh, 38 millimeter carburetor which uh, I must add was a bit of a bitch to get it right but once you'd sorted that out and a few other minor faults then these were very quick and powerful open class racers. Now pinging or pinking as it's sometimes known was another a uh, big problem with these 490s but that again was all down to getting the mixture just right with the jets in the carburetor but when these YZ490s were all sorted and you could handle that fiery delivery of the Yamaha motor then you had a bike that could take on the best that the motocross world could throw at it and more often than not uh, beat them all hands down. Well I do hope you enjoyed that latest uh, selection of bikes from around the paddock taken uh, from my video archives and in my next video we will be doing uh, much the same and we'll be taking a stroll through the race paddock at the Robbie Allen Memorial Scramble uh, that was held at uh, Tinto Moto Park in uh, 2014 so uh, look out for that. So once again thanks for your loyalty and for coming back to my channel and uh, we'll speak again once more when we return to Classic Dirt Bike TV.